second Come with me I'm not really asking It all started working on a series in my dad's shed. I followed my dreams and joined the Marines, serving in Afghanistan. Defenders were always part of me. So here we are, building custom machines with my awesome team in Shropshire. We are Maker. Morning guys, welcome back to Maker. This is, this is episode 31. Today I'm gonna to answer all those questions that we asked you over the last couple of episodes. If you wanna know anything about this business or anything about me or anything about what we do here, I asked you to ask these questions. So today I'm gonna to answer them questions to the best of my knowledge. If I haven't answered your questions, guys, it's either I haven't got round to it or I'm sorry if we missed you out. So here goes Chris, hit me up. Right, so Dave, uh, first one, do you ever consider axle swap? Say for instance, one ton axles from a US truck. So actually we have done this. So a couple of our builds, we did a couple that went over to Dubai. We took axles from a Dodge Ram, so a Dodge Ram 3500. They were from memory down a 60s, down a 60 front, down a 60 rear, and we can do that. So the bracketry is quite tricky, but we can most certainly do that. Right, this one's from Richard Foster on YouTube. Uh, new engines, lots more power. Do you put additional strength into the chassis? So Richard, yes, we do. So for instance, our next big job is gonna be a 130 with an LT4. So big supercharged engine, 6.2 litre, and we've gone for a heavy duty Marsden chassis. So Marsden offer this out the box, but as you'll notice, our mounts are heavy duty. They're captive. They have a big 60 mm bolt that runs through every single mount. So everything is gusseted, supported all the way down to the base. Cool. Uh, Robert Orr, also on YouTube. Does the LS3 fit into a 64 Series 2? So it will fit into a Series 2. It has to go right back. I mean, right back up to the bulkhead. So the bulkhead will need some mods to clear the manifolds. We were planning to do one this year for a guy called Dan and unfortunately it got pulled out because I think his missus got wind of the, how much the bill was going to be. But we will be doing one soon. If not, hit us up and we'll do one for you. Cool. Um, Garner, um, what's the maximum horsepower you could get safely from an M57 with a few modifications? This would be one I'd actually put to glad my tuning guy. Uh, I believe 450 has been, has been knocked on the doors of before now. And I want to say my 130 is probably knocking on the doors of that because boy does she shift. So. But there's things like, we are going down the lines of CNC ported heads, bigger turbos. We are looking at going for maybe an oversized bore, but it all depends if we can source the piston. So keep following and you never know what we might get. Um, I think this is a really important one, certainly looking at the value of people are spending on some of their vehicles, certainly here at Maker. What tips do you have for securing a Defender? So my biggest tips, guys, is to put them in a garage, obviously. For those of you that haven't got a garage, so we've got a customer, Arnie, and he's, he's gonna live in central London. So for him, we've given him the best of the best alarm systems, trackers, demobilizers, you know, things that are mobilizers on the mobilizers, basically. So there's one on the engine, there's one on the body harness, and you can only slow these guys down. Like nowadays, they've got seven and a half ton trucks with grabs, so they literally pick the car up, put it in the back. We can't stop that, guys, unless you're putting these cars in, in prison, basically. Um. When would you choose an M57 over an LS3 and vice versa? So this is one I have seen crop up numerous times. So let's say a guy calls me called Joe. I'd say, Joe, right, what's the plan for your car? Do you intend on, is it being a toy? Is it gonna be, is it just gonna be a weekend jaunt? And some people actually ask me miles per gallon. It almost makes me wanna put the phone down. But for me, it's, it has gotta be a consideration because some people live where fuel stations aren't in abundance. So in the country, like around here in Shropshire, you've probably got a garage every 60 to 70 miles. It's not a big problem, so you can get to one. But with the M57, the M57 is a daily. So if a customer said to me, Dave, I want a daily toy, we can still tweak them up and make them fun and make them outrageous and still put a smile on your face, but nothing does beat that growl from the LS3, unfortunately. So it's horses for courses, guys. But, so if you want a toy, I say LS3. And if you're a baller and money is no option, you go LS3 and you can have a supercharger or a turbocharger, whatever you want to do. Um, but for the out and out, everyday usability, you go with an M57, hands down. Super. Um, we've had quite a few questions about TD5s. What do you want to say about TD5s? So TD5s is actually a thing that I've now joined forces with Gary from Alive Tuning, and we will be doing a lot more with the TD5s. Unfortunately, guys, it's just the way the cookie crumbles in this workshop. We've not really had many TD5s. And the ones that we have had, um, Dean that works for me, he is, 
very, very enthusiastic when it comes to TD5s. He does a lot with heads, he does a lot with turbos. And so I've always handed them over to him and he's done the side for me. But we are now looking at taking Gary, or we have, we've, we've signed a deal now with Gary to have his tuning in-house. So I can now map your car in-house with my own equipment. So we will be offering things like hybrid turbos, head work, performance upgrades to knock on the door of 275 horsepower. So, or we can do maybe eco maps and just liven it up a little bit. And we can do rebuilds. I have seen a few questions. Can you rebuild a TD5? Guys, we can rebuild anything, but just give us a call like everyone else and get it booked in. Um, what about your history, Dave? I think this is probably coming from the uh, intro we have on the videos. Uh, were you a VM in the Marines? And if so, did you go through Borden? Of course I went through Borden. That place put shivers down my spine because it was literally boredom in Borden. And yes, it is what it is. It, I, wish, I wish I stayed longer in there, but unfortunately it is what it is. I left and so many guys have done the same thing. The Marines set me up a very good stance in life, if you like. I loved it. It made me who I am today. It made me very resilient to the stuff that's going on in the world right now. But here I am now, still walking and talking. And I still do the little bits here and there for the veterans out there, which thanks again, guys, for everything that you've done. And, and if anyone ever wants to come here, they can be ex-serving, they can be still serving. And you know what, guys, I would utmost love to work on your Land Rovers and I'll give you a very good discount. Cool. This one's from Lion U on, um, on YouTube. I would like to add some mods to a 130 on a somewhat limited budget. What would you recommend I spend my money on? Fluffy dice. <laughs> um, Depends what you want, really. So if you want it for looks and lovely set of wheels and tires, can transform a 130. Um, we did a guy, I think his name was Niall. We did a, we just dropped, it was actually the wheels off my original dirty 130. I did him a very good price on those. And it literally turned his truck from, let's say, a run of the mill seven Trent water truck, like county spec white commercial thing to a very chunky looking rugged machine. So first thing, wheels and tires, maybe a lift kit, Maybe some decals, something like that. About the business now, where does the name Maker come from? That's from Richard Sadler on YouTube. Where does the name Maker come from? So Rich, so Maker came, God, it was very tough. We had so many things like Victorus, we came with, oh, you've got the likes of like Bespoke, Unique. Um, oh, there's so many names out there in the Land Rover world and everyone is jumping on the bandwagon in this industry. <clears throat> but we pride ourselves on making things in-house. So my hands, for instance, I make things with my hands. Sam makes things with his hands. Darren makes things with his hands. All my guys are so passionate about making things. For me, it was a maker of, we make defenders. We don't just buy bits and bolt them on like so many of the other people out there, not to mention any names, but we like things. Like this morning, Sam's been making things for Wombat and he's literally grafted a piece of aluminium from a, I don't know, an eight before sheet into now that'll be part of Mr. Wombat's dash. And for us, it's Maker. So, but we added an H in there, so it's Maker Defender. So it sounds, it sounds nice, it looks good on the back of the cars. And as you've seen, our iconic badge is made in cast. For me, it works. And when my brand builder approached me with the name, I just fell in love with it. So there you go, Rich. And this is from uh, Tim, also on YouTube. Um, what can we expect to see coming up in the next couple of months? <sighs> So the next couple of months, we're going down the route of, oh, what's coming new? So we've got a lot of M57 to Puma swaps. We've got a shed full of ones that have basically died because as we know, the Ford engines are not reliable and seem to have um, clattered to bits. So we've got a lot of M57s coming in to help our clients. And just for the people out there that think that people are jumping the queue, that's not such a thing, guys. What happens is some people come to me with such an urgency that they use their truck as a daily thing. And I do feel sorry for them because sometimes, like we had a guy the other week who actually, he was four by four response. So he goes out and takes the nurses to the hospital. So we were helping him and he said, look, Dave, can you drop an engine in my car, ASAP? And that was the one that we did just before Christmas. And we did that to help him out because let's say we did have a lot of snow come in and one of us needed medical attention. I would be grateful for that guy because he does it for the goodness of his heart. He doesn't charge, he puts his own money in the fuel tank. And we actually gave him a nice little sponsor before Christmas because I love what he's doing and my sister being a nurse, I felt for him basically. So don't be afraid guys, if you see cars coming in and out of this workshop, it's not because it's jumping the queue, it's because parts. And right now we're waiting on radiators, we're waiting on, oh God, manifold systems, heater systems for cars, air conditioning parts. That's the biggest bug at the moment now. 
but what was the question again? <laughs> Just where, where are we going in the next, uh, next few months? So yeah, guys, we've got a lot of LSs booked in. I think I've got six LS3 swaps. We've got an LT, LT4, we've got two of those in the pipeline. We were looking at doing an LT5, but unfortunately GM have pulled that for some reason. So there must've been a, some kind of snatchback with that engine. But the LT4s are going to be mega. We've got an LT4 130. We've got an LT1 110 that's in the pipeline. So we've got plenty, guys. So keep tuned in and keep stuck to the channel. So thanks again anyway, guys, for tuning in. I hope I haven't bored you too much. But if you want to know anything, don't be afraid to ask a question. And for the people that keep dropping negative comments, I actually appreciate it because it makes me tougher and it makes me want to prove you more guys wrong. So keep them comments coming as well. But as you can see, guys, we're really busy. This is Project Rodent behind us. In between the major jobs, a few of our guys have been busy. Like the painters and shop blasts have done an amazing job on this chassis. You wouldn't think that chassis is as old as me. So that chassis is knocking on the doors of 35 years old. And it's come up like brand new. So I think I need a bit of a cosmetic surgery. But we've gone down the lines of Fox Shocks. And a big shout out to Paul at ProLinx because he gave us a very lovely discount with these shocks. And that's going towards what we're going to be doing. So we go on Scram Africa and it's for a charity. And what we're going to do with this truck, we're not going to sell it when we're finished with it. This truck is going to stay in London with Rob. Rob is going to own this, Mr. Tasker. And this car is going to be taking people. And I believe he's going on the lines of, you know, like safari tours in and around the country, mainly London, but I know he does want to go worldwide with it. So I'm hoping this car carries its heritage throughout its lifetime, guys, because my engine's iconic. The gearbox is being built by Tom at Winchester. Everybody in the UK, and also I want to give a big shout out to Chris at ORE. He's donating us a winch bumper and a rear wheel carrier, which is, I believe his rear wheel carrier is the new truck type. So the one, you know, where you fold down tailgate and it's got its own clasp and lock. He's been faffing for ages, guys, trying to get this lock, locking mechanism. And I ring him on a daily basis. I'm like, Chris, where's my rear wheel carrier? Because I want to get it on and I want to show it off. So sort your act out, Chris. I want that wheel carrier soon. But anyway, the guys at Loft Break, so Luke at Loft has donated us, as you can see down there, some lovely discs and pads. So they've gone on this week. Gwyn Lewis, Gwyn, you've done an amazing job again. So I always mention him because, you know what, Gwyn's a fantastic guy, hardworking chap from Wales, just on our doorstep. He donated these sumo bars to the cause and this ultimate conversion kit. So this is basically allowing us, if I, if I have a ball joint failure, I haven't got a mess about trying to rebuild the ball joint. I literally pull one out, undo that bolt there, this locking nut, and I basically bolt another joint in. So something we can repair in the desert. So thanks again, Gwyn. I'm sure I'll be praising you, mate, when we've hit something out there and bust that off. <laughs> uh, where else can we go? So for some of you that recognise, this isn't an original dash. So we've had to go with a TD5 bulkhead just because we actually ran out of time, guys. So we're running out of time on this project. So what we've done is we've given him a TD5 excess bulkhead that came from an insurance breaker a few months ago. And as you see on here, because I said to Rob, you know what, mate, I'm not doing thousands and thousands of miles across the desert with no radio. Like, we want to be listening to some, like, you know, Celine Dion, pop a rock in it. So that's going to be cool in there. And the wheels have turned out really well. So these are some nice wolves. We haven't gone banded on this like we normally do. We've just gone with a nice powder coated finish. Do not tidy. It looks a mess, but I know where it is and I know it's here. And if it doesn't get tidied up, it can't go missing, can it? <laughs> Pretty good. What's going on here then, Louis? We're going to put the seat box in. And after we have to line up the doors. Oh, <laughs> that's always fun. This has had good progress in the last couple of weeks by the look of it. Yeah, no bad. We get in there. You're going to be going with Dave to uh, Africa with no. it? No. You don't fancy that one? <laughs> yeah, he's got to look after himself.
guys, for those of you that have not seen inside the G-Wagon, I think only people that have been to the shop, and there's a few pictures on Instagram and things. So, our customer James wanted an AIM software, so like a full PDM kit, which we've come up against some challenges with this, like well, massive challenges. In the end, I ended up subcontracting this out to actually an AIM specialist because we've never fitted one of these PDM controllers before. So, I subbed it out to, it was actually a local guy that understood it. He had to teach himself the full interface system. But we got there in the end, and as you can see in here, this car came to us, I believe it's 1980, so it's quite a fair old car. So originally it came with a BMW, not a BMW, a Mercedes diesel engine, which no one could get running. So it was an old, I think it was a 3.3 CDI, something like that. But anyway, so we pulled all out, we've installed an LS3, 480 horsepower, and we gave him this aim dash, and this little dash pod here. So to install something like this, you're looking around about, including the kit, I don't know, seven and a half thousand, something like that. So what you'll see here, so this is the button setup. So you've got things like radio, fan, interior lights. You normally see this in like race cars for simplicity. So what we've gave him here is ignition. As you hear there, there's the fuel pumps kicking in. And then here, our start button. See how trim this, it's a really trick gauge. So you can have things like fuel lights, indicators, flash, we've literally got everything that you can imagine on here. So if you look at this little screen here, we've given it things like interior lamps, so we can dim them, we can do exterior lights, we can turn the radio on, rear wash, obviously we're going to get the correct buttons for this, this is just mock-up. And um, what I love about it most is it keeps an eye on everything, so like oil pressure, um, transmission temperature, you name it, you can add anything you want to this aim. It's, it takes some getting your head around, but once you've done one, you're obviously on board with it. So, if you come out the front. Most of you have normally see like a G63 engineer. This has got a Chevrolet 480 horsepower V8, so 6.2 litre. And if you look down here, you see how tight the manifolds are. So there's a few things left to finish. So what you see here, that's a Tremet T56, six speed. So that's the Magnum. So this is the latest gearbox. So nice short shift box, nice and tight. And what we've done, we've coupled this to the original G-Wagon transfer case. And as you see here, these are the diff locks, push pull levers. So we're gonna finish the center console. That's next on the list. Customer's got a nice, you know, like a vintage stereo that's going in it. And then we've got to finish all the little plastics and bits and bobs. And then we're gonna mount this on here. So it's on full view of the driver and passengers, which I think is pretty damn cool.
Anything I need to be wary about? Um, nah, it's just quick. You just trust me. We're going down to like two. Yeah. <laughs> so guys, thanks for watching this week's episode. Andy's kindly lent me his track up for the weekend and I'm trying not to abuse it as much as it sounds awesome. Just listen to this. See you soon guys. Tune in, subscribe. Later. <laughs>